you know, mindful that in 2008, when we finally, uh, you know, erased 26 years of being outside, look, on the outside looking in, we're in the playoffs. And my numbers may be a little off, but, but that Phillies team, which went on in the World Series, um, their payroll, I think, was something like $108 million, and ours was $92 million. And as media reven local media revenues have grown asymmetrically, now this year they've got like a $280 million payroll, and we're something like one thirty. So you know, went from a you know fifteen million dollar difference to one hundred and fifty ten times difference, and that's just the uh, reality. So we have to uh, we have to work smarter. We have to develop players better, and we have to um, listen. Craig Craig Council's done a phenomenal job with these young men, and because even the veterans are young men. So you know, we we. Uh, we look at that as, as a challenge. We don't look at that as something we're, and, and as everybody knows here, we, I always want to compete. Uh, you know, there's a lot of commentary last year about the, uh, the hater trade, which we all know. But what was missed in the commentary is, you know, we're desperately trying to compete over a long period of time. And so, uh, you know, we, we stumbled last season with that trade, but you know, now we have William Contreras here and, uh, you know, it's it. What it's things like that show the confidence I have in our baseball ops group to keep finding that next guy, and it's a challenge because everybody's trying to do that. And and so far, you know, David Stearns and now Matt Arnold uh, have executed really well. Well, to get more granular than anybody really wants to, some of it is we, you know, having a, a younger team with more call-ups. Whenever the published number is there. They don't count the fact that we, we sometimes have 60 guys run through our roster, and so every one of those call-ups adds to the actual number, and it, it can be five to eight million dollars a year. Uh, and, and I think it's that would therefore be higher than some clubs which have more established rosters. Uh, we have not had, I know, nobody wants to hear this, but we haven't really had a budget in a long time. We, we, we try to get to a break even, the reason you get to a break even is, um, you know, it, it, you can end up in a downward spiral if, if do a case study on teams that, you know, lose too much money for too long and then they end up gutting the team. We're trying to always compete. Relative to the, the dipping part, you could look at the where we sit in media revenues and we are 30 out of 30. That's just a mathematical truth. Uh, we punch above our weight with fan attendance, which I talked about. We, we punch above our weight and we have, uh, again, this year, record number of uh, new sponsorships. So, we, every, you know, everything, we're, we're running our businesses as well as it could, could be run. Um, there's some metrics they've done at MLB that, that demonstrate that, which, you know, I'm not going to talk about here. But, we, you know, if, if you look at the numbers and how we run our business, same way you look at wins on the field, it, it's as exceptional as on the field. But... Um, you know, it, it, it is what it is. And we want to always leave money at midseason to compete. We were in last, which, you know, didn't get public. And I never, you know, last thing we want to do is start looking, oh, we were trying to trade for whoever at midseason because we didn't get them. But we were in on a number of midseason trades that would have added significant dollars last year. Uh, and, and as it was, even with, with all the activity, we actually had the same payroll. We didn't. We traded Josh. We didn't. Was our payroll was the money we always took on was was the same. So uh, we we always try to leave flexibility to to do things, and then it it just the number the number falls out. I don't really look at the. I don't look at where we sit in the in the numbers.